Well, the overall number of cancer deaths is on the decline, but the number of cases are on the rise. And according to the American Cancer Society, they're being diagnosed at younger ages. Colon cancer is now the leading cause of cancer deaths for people under 50 among men, ranking second for women. And Dr. Curtis Chong is a clinical assistant professor of medical oncology at Stanford. So, doctor, thanks for joining us. But first, what is behind this rise in cancer cases? Yes, so thank you so much, Ryan, for the opportunity to be on and to raise public awareness about this uh, issue. So like you said, while the overall number of colorectal cases are declining due to improved screening, the number of new cases of colorectal cancer in young patients, defined as 45 to 50 years old, so you know, you'd still be young, Ryan, um, has actually been on the rise at about 1% to 2% each year, such that colorectal cancer in patients under 50 will be the leading cause of death in men and the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths in women under 50. So, and, so, and, oh, go, oh, go ahead. And so in terms of the causes, we know that cancer can be caused by lifestyle choices like smoking, for example, with lung cancer, by infections, uh, the human papillomavirus we see with uh, cervical, anal, and throat cancers, environmental can uh, exposures like sun can cause melanoma. In the case of colorectal cancers, hereditary syndromes account for about 30% of patients with early onset colorectal cancers. And about one in three patients will have a first degree relative with colorectal cancer. But the overall reason has sort of been unclear. Now, colorectal cancer in young people follows what's called the birth cohort effect. So that compared to individuals born in the 1940s, individuals born in the 1990s have a fourfold higher risk of rectal cancer and a twofold increase in the risk of colon cancer. And this, Ryan, suggests that there might be something in the environment that's changing. Could this be um, uh, smoking, consumption of red or processed meats, obesity, consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages? We don't know. What we do know, Ryan, is that exercise and a plant-based diet, along with screening, can reduce the risk of colorectal cancer. So with that said, the screening for colon cancer used to be at 50. Now it's 45. I mean, should we be even lowering that age? Yeah, so that's a really good question, Ryan. And my hope is, is that as we have more non-invasive tests to detect colon cancer, such as multi-targeted stool-based DNA testing, that more patients will be able to be screened earlier. That's something that's the subject of extensive epidemiologic and clinical investigation so that we can show that earlier screening can have an impact in terms of earlier detection and diagnosis because we know that young patients with colorectal cancer tend to present with advanced stage disease and might have to see multiple providers before they're correctly diagnosed. And, and so what are the signs, what are the symptoms of colon cancer, especially in, in the younger folks? So that's a great question, Ryan, and we want to raise awareness of this situation. So uh, colon cancer can present in three ways. One is symptoms from the tumor that are locally, such as a change in bowel habits, which is oftentimes the most common symptom. There may also be rectal bleeding in addition to the change of the bowel habits. Um, you might have the sensation of a mass in the, in, in the colorectal system or an iron deficiency anemia. Sometimes patients are discovered by routine screening or testing for something else. And in the worst case, patients may present in an emergency fashion with intestinal obstruction, perforation, or rarely GI bleeding. And, and I got my colonoscopy uh, last year. Uh, explain to people that the process, it, it sounds bad, but it really isn't that bad. Yeah, so, so I, I had my colonoscopy when I was 45. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the prep, it's, it's like having a little bit of food poisoning, but, you know, the actual procedure yourself, um, they give you medicine and you wake up and it's like, I, I did not feel anything at all. And I was back to work the next day. The main thing, especially in a young person, you know, if you're busy, you have a career, you, 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 you know, you do need someone to accompany you to the appointment mm -hmm. and you do need to take time off work. So I completely sympathize with, with um, you know, how, how it can be in a young person, you know, to get this screening, because we know that young people might not have primary care physicians, they might not be able to take time off work. And that's why I'm hopeful that new testing, like, say, the Cologuard or stool-based yeah. DNA testing can, can assist.
Well, definitely take the time, get tested. It's not as bad as people think, <laughs> it did, but it does take some time. So uh, Dr. Curtis Chong, always good information uh, with Stanford Health. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Ryan, so much. Have a good day and thank you for raising awareness. Yeah, thank you, sir.